Rickettsia. Rickettsia is an obligate organism, meaning that it can survive only within cells. It cannot survive outside the cell because it needs a cell in order to generate an amount of energy, in order to replicate, in order to cause disease. So this is the organism that lives, that lives like a king inside a cell. Now it has various types. It consists upon Rickettsia rickettsii, which causes rocky mounted spotted fever. Now, the another type of rickettsia is Coxella benitii, which causes Q fever, R. Pawlowski, and R. typhi, which causes typhus, along with rickettsia susugamushi, which also causes typhus. Now, what happens? The other important features of this organism is that it divides by binary fission. That if there is one body, it will again split into two, and then these two will split into another two, and then this will split into another two and similarly it's like a fusion reaction is going on this organism is quite small rod like small rod like it resembles gram negative rod but it is poorly stained by gram stain so it is barely visible like you can see it is barely visible i cannot see it it's so lightly staining okay the other thing about is that uh, now this organism what it does is in order to identify this organism we do a wheel felix test this is a very primitive test which is not currently used but what happens is that if we detect that a certain body has uh, rickettsia what obviously that body would have developed antibodies against this rickettsia now what we do is we take the serum which contains all of these antibodies and we uh, cross react them in a medium which contains ox strain of proteus vulgaris which is another bacteria now the strains what it does is this antibody attaches itself to the ox strain which can be ox2 ox19 or ok by combining with this this culture would agglutinate similarly we would know what rickettsia is present yes now so this is the identification test of rickettsia now, what actually rickettsia does? Rickettsia, what it does is it enters the blood of the organism. It gets uh, the person, basically there is a vector which trans, which consists upon this bacteria. And this, uh, this, this organism basically car car uh, known, uh, carries a lot of vectors. That kind of vector could be a flea, a louse, anything. So what it does is inside the body of the vector there is a trans ovarian cycle going on meaning that it is forming many babies of this bacteria and this again comes to the saliva and the person gets bitten by such louse it enters what it enters the blood now when it enters the blood this bacteria attaches itself or it secretes a lot of endotoxin as you can see by the dots here it secreted a lot of endotoxin now this endotoxin, what it does, it, it caused inflammation. It inflamed the vessel, resulting in vasculitis. Now, if the vessel is inflamed, obviously the epithelium will become dilated. The, uh, the this would become the epithelium would be more permeable, and similarly, a lot of fluid will leak out into the tissue as because the vascular permeability is increased now leaking of this tissue the fluid uh, this leaking of this fluid is known as edema there will be swelling now what would happen on the surface of the skin on the surface of the skin initially what it does it will form a macule now like this it will form a vacuole over the skin because underlying inflammation is going on and this ma macule will later on turn into petechiae which is like a bruise like appearance now this bruise like appearance has various characteristics it can start uh, centrally and go peripherally or peripherally and come centrally now this is in order to diagnose different types of diseases which we'll study the first one we'll study is rickettsia rickettsia now here uh, the vector is dermacenter veribalis which is actually a dog dick now we know that a trans ovarian cycle went in uh, was going on to the tick and if the tick has a female partner it will also transfer this bacteria to her 
So tick tick cycle is going on. A human is an accidental host and it affects normally children because children obviously are playing a lot in summers and this is a time when the tick is most active. Now, how it manifests, it manifests as non-specific symptoms like headache, body ache, that was a non-specific symptoms, but after two to six days, what happens? A rash appears, these particular, a particular rash appears, starting from macules and then ascending to a particular rash. Now, the particular rash, it, it form on the extremities, like the uh, like your legs and your arms and it goes centrally now this is the characteristic of rickettsia rickettsii which was caused by dermis center varibellus which is a dog tick now what happens in q fever that is caused by rickettsia which is coxella berniti this does not need a vector instead it is transferred by aerosols now what it is inhaled it enters the lungs now in the lungs it does a similar vasculitic like appearance similarly edema here occurs it can also go at affect your liver and similarly it can, can cause hepatitis in the lungs it will cause pneumonia like symptoms in the liver it will cause hepatitis like symptoms now how is this aerosol getting into the body uh, now this organism is carried by specific animals now these animals are sheep uh, so this guy must be a shepherd who is treating livestock it can even occur with pay, uh, with person who are butchers so this is actually killing her which is abattoir and even farmer because that are dealing with unpasteurized milk now next is typhus now typhus is caused by a lot of organisms but um, the hum uh, it can also be caused by human because human consists of a specific lice known as pediculus when a pediculus what it happens is it's transferred human life that are transferred between two humans similarly the typhus would occur now, apart from that uh, other vectors that cause typhus is r pavazaski which cause uh, which spreads uh, typhus by love by its vector having being a louse r typhi is caused by flea borne scrub typhus or chigger borne is caused by susugamushi rickettsii now after the lice bites the human after the lice bites the human, it takes approximately one to three weeks and the patient develops uh, non zomical symptoms like influenza and after influenza, what it, the person does is uh, five to nine days, a rash appears which is central and it goes to the periphery. The patient can also develop certain complications such as encephalitis and that could be progressive to delirium and even coma. So now how do we diagnose it? We can diagnose this disease by detecting antibodies which is formed in the blood by serology. So in serology what we have the classical test ELISA. Now ELISA will show us an antibody titer of 1 to 28 which is a diagnostic for identifying rickettsia rickettsii and apart from the lesions which we already see that are particular. And what is the treatment of choice? The treatment of choice, the first line of treatment is tetracyclines, the second line of treatment is chloroamphenicol.